All righty, welcome everybody to the webinar. Um, I'm Trevor, I'm your presenter, and we've got some good stuff we're talking about today. Stuff that we've talked about in the past for sure and is in some of our other webinars. Um, but, uh, but today we're gonna, we're gonna discuss it a little more in depth. We're talking specifically about eBay titles, which we talk about a lot because of how important they are. Um, we've got a tool that I wanna share with you guys today um, specifically to help you create titles better, faster, with you know more robust with keywords that are going to actually drive traffic to your listings. You know, there's hardly anything you can do on eBay that's more important than good solid quality titles and so that's why we spend so much time on this. Let me give you guys a few a, a few sort of do's and don'ts with your titles just right off the bat. And these are absolute musts, especially for those of us that are maybe doing some drop shipping maybe using the retail strategy and our prices on eBay may not be that great or overall they're just not that competitive. Um, you gotta get an edge somehow and it's, it's usually through your title that you're gonna get that edge. So, couple of do's. Number one, they're 80 characters and that's about your allotment. You're given 80 spaces or 80 characters to fill it in with as many keywords as you can, use up all of them. I really shouldn't see any titles that are much below 80. I mean, it's okay if you've got a title that's 77, 78, 79 characters, but we like to get really close to 80, and you usually can. Number two there is if you're trying to figure out what to put in your eBay title and you're not sure, look at what other people are doing. You can go onto eBay and do a quick search for the type of product you're trying to sell and see what other sellers are doing because they probably – have either done the research or have done part of the research, they may have keywords that you've never thought of. And uh, that's a good way to start looking. So look at your competition. Three, and this is going to be more of the topic of today, there's a tool that I like and, and I've been using a little more lately. It's called title-builder.com. Okay, this hasn't been mentioned before in any of our other content. Title-builder.com. It, it's good. I think you guys who struggle with creating titles quickly and effectively are going to appreciate that. So we're going to talk about that. So that's definitely a do. Um, number four, capitalize your first letters of each of your words. That's per eBay's best, best practices of creating a title. Let's definitely make sure we do that. Number five, try out different keyword phrases. And guys, what I mean by that is if you've got a listing that's been up on eBay for three weeks, right? You think you've got a solid title, but it's not selling or it's not getting a lot of interest. Take an honest look at your title and ask yourself if it's as good as it could be. And if you're like, yeah, I think that's all the keywords I can possibly think of. I know there's some others that you probably haven't tried. I consider adjusting a few of those keywords. Um, that can actually make a pretty considerable difference trying out different ones. Now, a couple of do nots, absolutely do not with a title. And this should be a good reminder for some of you guys. You don't use punctuation in a title. And I'm talking no commas, no dashes, um, no slashes, no periods, no, no punctuation at all. It's just gonna be a string. Obviously, there's gonna be spaces in the title between your keywords, but it'll be a string of keywords with capital letters at the start of each word going through. It'll look like a giant run-on sentence, okay? But no punctuation. Don't do the all caps thing. Sometimes you see this on eBay where everything's in caps on the title. Don't do that. It doesn't look nearly as professional. Just capitalize the first letter of each word. And number three, this one I really can't emphasize enough. Or emphasize enough. Um, let's not make excuses for having short titles, okay? Like sometimes I'll chat with clients about it and they're like, well, Trevor, I couldn't, you know, I couldn't think of anything else. So I just went on. I've only got 55 characters in my title and I was just hurrying and trying to get listings up. So I, so I just skipped through it. I mean, I mean, you just, you, you can't do that guys. Like if we're going to sell effectively on eBay, we have to do, if there's one thing we have to do well, it's got to be the title. And, and seriously, no excuses. There's probably not a single product out there in the world that you can't come up with enough keywords to pack into a title to hit that 80 characters. And if you think there is one, I challenge you to, to contact me about it and I'll 
I, I think I can prove you wrong. There's going to be an opportunity to make sure you can use your 80 characters. So no excuses. This is one place that we have to be right on point. Number four, don't rush your title. Um, and what I mean by that is a lot of you guys are working on sort of speed listings, right? We're, 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 we're obsessed with this idea of trying to get a listing up quickly because with some of our strategies, the, speedy, the speedier you are, um, the better off you're going to be. If you can get a, a listing from top to bottom done in four minutes, then in the space of an hour, you can get quite a few of those knocked out. But if, you're, if your listing time is up around 20, 25 minutes of listing, you're only going to get a couple of done. So we're, we're all about focusing on speed. But if that speed is costing you quality because your titles aren't very good, that's problematic. So don't rush your title. That's one thing I want you guys to spend some time on. And then number five, don't worry about grammar. Like as you look at a title, it should just one run on sentence. It doesn't necessarily need to, to make sense. Um, so anyway, grammar kind of goes out the door. It's a title. That's, that's the way it works. Okay. So those are, those are my do's and don'ts of titles. And that should be a review for some of you guys. I wanted to chat about that first. Now going over to eBay real quick. This is, this is one of eBay's pages, and I, I'm not going to give you the address. I just want you to kind of read it here with me. I Hopefully, I've zoomed in enough to where you guys can see this. This is kind of what eBay says about titles. Um, and a lot of it's just sort of, I mean, this is, this is their official policy, and so we, of course, need to pay attention to it. Um, but a lot of it is kind of a repeat of some of the stuff I've said. Um, they want you to use 80 characters here. They want you to include the brand name, the artist, the designer, whatever, stuff that people would search for. Um, include specifics, size, color, condition, model number, okay? State exactly what your item is. Don't use multiple synonyms or plurals. So plurals, that's one thing to remember. If you're selling, if you're selling an item, you don't need to have the plural form of it and the singular form, okay? So if I'm selling a black iPhone case, I don't have to say black iPhone case and then add another word cases after it with an S. Case is good enough and, and I'm gonna be relevant if somebody types in cases. So they're saying don't, you don't need to plural and singularize your words. Um, yeah, and, and Scott, you mentioned hyphens. Uh, really no, I mean, unless it makes sense I don't know. I guess I'd have to see the the you know the context of the use of the hyphen, but I would say in most cases probably not. Um, I, I don't think I would use hyphens at all. Just just space out your words. Um, they see, and that's this right here. Omit punctuation marks and asterisks. So no punctuation. Don't include words like wow or look because guess what, guys? People don't search using those kind of words. Our title is supposed to be packed with key words so that our listing gets found. Um, they say use correct spelling. Don't worry about creating a grammatically correct sentence. We talked about that. Don't overuse acronyms and don't use all caps. We talked about that as well. So that's per eBay policy. There's one thing I wanna add to all of this that we don't discuss as much in some of our other content. And that's that I think, and this is kind of my theory based on my experience in, in writing titles and selling on eBay. I think eBay actually more heavily weights what kind of keywords you put at the start of your title versus later on in the middle and at the end. So it's like whatever, whatever the core keywords are of your product, like the really important ones, the ones that you think people are definitely typing in, those you want at the very start, the lesser important ones you can fill in at the end. I think there's a weighting formula inside there somewhere. And you won't find that documented by eBay, but I, I certainly have my theories about it based on what I've seen. So maybe keep that in mind as you're doing your titles as well. Um, yeah, so Linda, that's, that's not a bad example. You're saying like, you know, for like a four-in-one item or a three-in-one item, a crib that's a three-in-one. Yeah, I guess you could use hyphens there. Yep. I think where you don't want to use a hyphen is you don't want to use a hyphen as a spacer. So a lot of people, you'll see that in titles, they'll use their hyphen as a, as a way to space out 
different parts of the title that that's that's not what you want to use a hyphen for but if it makes sense inside of a inside of a, you know like a four in one and, and you need you need hyphens there yeah for sure because that's that's yeah that makes a lot more sense and that actually might be searched for as well okay um now i want to skip over here to this title builder for just a second and then i'm, I'm going to catch up on your guys's questions so title builder it's title dash builder dot com okay title dash builder dot com it's a free tool this doesn't cost you anything which is wonderful right it seems like these days there's not too many great things in the world that are free but this tool is absolutely free so we're going to use it um and it's I mean, full disclosure, I use it on and off. Like if I'm struggling with a with a product and I'm really just not sure on keywords, I'll either come to Title Builder to get an idea of some keywords or I'll check my competition on eBay and see if I can come up with some keywords. Between those two strategies, I can always come up with something that works. Um so I'm going to I'm going to show you guys how this works here in just one second. Um okay, let me let me just catch up with some of your guys' comments here. Let me just read through them. If you don't mind giving me just a second here. Yeah, Don, you'll want to adjust your title first. Yep. Um, Maria, welcome. It's good to have you here. You say you're you're brand new to the program. Well, we're sure glad to have you. Um, these, these eBay webinars we do every Friday, and you'll see that on the site. So please come as often as you can and, and that that comment box is just for that so as we're talking and you have questions and concerns as we're as we're doing the presentation feel free to put that information there for sure Don okay so you bring up an interesting point you say I ran across this today had a form of a word in my title with ing at the end what was the word, Don? Do you remember? Because INGs, I think, actually do make a difference. The simple plural of a word, I don't think will, if you're adding an S or an ES, but an ING, I think, may change it enough. Let me know what word that was. Um, yeah. TH as well, Kirk, I think, so from warm to warmth. So we're talking like endings, small endings of words that sort of like change the meaning a little bit, right? I mean, essentially, it's it's kind of the same. I don't think eBay's formula picks up on that. I think those are going to be looked at. The word warm and warmth are going to be different words. The word warm and warms with an S at, a, at the end, I think are going to be looked at one and the same. That's the only thing eBay has told us. So I don't I don't think I can comment otherwise about some of these other ones. I think those are absolutely different words. Oh, fire and firing. Yeah, firing, Don, would be different for sure. So I might have both in the title. I might have the word fire and firing. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, good. Good, good. All right, good comments. So let me let me get back here, continue to add comments there, but I've got to show you guys how this title builder works. Now, title builder, like I said, it's a free program. When you get there onto the home screen, you just come up here and you click on title builder, this icon, or I'm sorry, this little um, title builder title in the navigation here at the top. So you'll start out here on the home page. There's not really, it's just kind of selling itself on the home page. Come and click on title builder in the nav in the navigation. And it's going to look pretty unassuming. It's just got a little search box. Well, I want to do an example with you guys so you guys can see how it works. Um, and again, I'm not saying you always have to use this when you're creating titles. This is just a really good tool if you've got a, a, an item you're trying to sell that you can't figure out how to max out your 80 characters or you're just not sure what are going to be the best keywords. What I don't want to have happen, guys, is you spend so much time on the title that it makes it to where you're taking 30 minutes every time you're trying to get an item listed. That's count, That's counterproductive in this case. We want to use this to speed us up, 
and to be a little more efficient and and uh, have better keywords in our title. Let's not let it slow us up too much. So this item right here, okay, I, I just I got a picture of it just because on my desk here, and I was thinking before I had this presentation, I was thinking, okay, what could we do an example with that's kind of generic that might be more difficult to create a, a title for? I've got this on my iPhone right now, and so I, I thought I'd grab a picture of it. So there it is, that item right there. We're going to assume here just for a second that that's the item that we want to get sold, okay? And really, it's, a, it's an iPhone case. It's a wallet kind of all in one, right? So it might protect my phone while at the same time, you know, I, I, I lose my wallet all the time. I don't know how you guys are. My wife makes fun of me about it all the time. It's like I either lose my phone, my wallet, or my keys. One of those is perpetually lost. And so finally I decided, okay, I'm just gonna combine the wallet and the phone and make it a little easier on myself and give myself a better chance to always know where my stuff is. So that's what that's why I got one of these. Now, if I'm if I'm at a point where I want to sell it, and I'm thinking about you know writing a title, and I've got a I've got an, a window here so we can actually create this title. Um, what what should be my first step here? Knowing that this this is what it is, I'll let you guys see the picture once more. When you're creating a title and you're looking at this screen, I'll click back to it now. It's blank, right? I gotta create this title. I've got 80 characters here I can use. What's your thought process, guys? For those of you guys who've done this before, how do you quickly start a title, um, right? When you're, trying to, when you're trying to get good keywords in there, but also max it to the 80 limit? Okay, a lot of you guys are saying maybe like who makes it, right? Maybe the manufacturer. I'll just tell you mine, just for clarification's sake. I actually don't think this one right here is the exact one that I have. In fact, mine's mine looks like a little bit of a cheaper version, honestly. Mine's like, a, there's no brand on mine. Okay, so small clarification there, no brand. Okay, some of you are saying like what it is, maybe the color of it, maybe the material. I usually just kind of dump out everything that's in my head about this thing, okay? So I, I'm going to say it's, it's obviously for an iPhone, but specifically it's for an iPhone 5. That's an important, that's an important distinction. Now, if it's for an iPhone 5, should I, should I put out 5 next to it like this? Not just the numeral, but the actual the actual word most of you guys are saying no so why no a couple of you guys are saying yes most are saying no it, it is a repeat but that doesn't mean it's wrong if it's repeated it looks a little funny right iphone 5.5 five. Okay, I'm I'm going to argue no, and I'll just tell you why. I don't think anybody when they're looking for an iPhone 5 looks searches like that. Right? Don't the majority of people just type in iPhone 5? They don't type in iPhone 5. But they might. They might. That's something that we could look at, right? I mean, I do this all the time with other listings. If I'm listing a piece of furniture, um, it's it's patio furniture, right? Um, some people don't say patio. Some people say lawn furniture or deck furniture or pool furniture or outdoor furniture. I know that looks awfully repetitive, but that's 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 the makings of a good title because I'm accommodating the masses there for however you search for patio furniture. But for the sake of this example, I'm just going to say iPhone 5, okay? Um, but it's not an iPhone 5. It's an iPhone 5 what? It's an iPhone 5 case or, and I'm going to capitalize just so I show you guys the right way to do it. iPhone 5 case. It's also a wallet, right? Uh, 
um, the material is some sort of like really crappy fake leather. I know this. I know this isn't real leather. That's for sure. I'm looking at it. I know you guys can't see me looking at it, but I'm looking at it right now. Um, I don't even know what this is made of, honestly. I have no idea. Which is why this is a good example because you're going to look at products like I have no idea how to even describe this. <laughs> yeah, it's pleather, right? I don't even think it's leather, guys. I don't even know what this thing's made of, seriously. So I'm not even going to begin to guess. Um, but what? So what else? Is that all we got? The color, right? It's black. I'll show you guys the picture again. Is there another way to say case? Protector. Yeah, that's a good word. Scott says protector. Okay. Whoops. Let me go back to eBay here. Protector. All right. It's an iPhone protector case. carrier look at this so we're we've we've still got a ways to go don't we we've got 36 characters we're only halfway done here yeah uh ronda you say maybe money cash or credit cards yeah so it's, this is it's starting to get a little sticky right now so this is a good example of it's like crap i'm we've already been on this thing for four minutes uh i you know i don't want to take this long i want to hurry this thing up so i would either go one of two things i would maybe jump on the title builder and i would just type in like black i'd talk in, well let's see iphone wallet maybe or something and just see what else they come up with okay so here's here's how they work let me zoom in here so you guys can see this a little bit better they they break these down into what's hot what's popular what's searched and what's extra okay and that just means the ones that are hot are used in a ton of ebay listings i don't know how they do this exactly but they have some sort of account where i, I think they probably have some some sort of technology that plugs into ebay's database and so they're able to pull this kind of data out of that iphone is used a tremendous amount in various listings case is used a tremendous amount and so is the number four Number four is even used more than six and five. This is kind of an order of how often this kind of stuff is searched for, which is kind of cool to know. You can see what's most popular in terms of a, in terms of things relating to what I just put in here, iPhone wallet. So leather is awfully popular, although I don't know if I can really put that because I don't know what this is, right? Um, so anyway, so that this is how popular these various additional words are and phrases are. Um, this right here, this metric out here is how competitive um, the, the you know, how, how, I guess, how many competitors are using these same things in the titles. So this is just generally what's searched for. And then the other, the other metric here, this little bar graph is how much competition. So they must have two different metrics. I, I would imagine that they pull this little bar graph from kind of like how many eBay titles are using this kind of thing. I'm not sure exactly exactly. And I don't I don't think it matters necessarily other than to say you know some some are are more popular and competitive and that's fine. Like I don't necessarily care about that. I just want to know which ones are 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 being used most even if a lot of other people are using them too. I just want to get mine up there as well. So anyway, so you can you can read into that data as much as you want. But again, you can kind of see the little pop-up window. If I put my mouse under the question mark, it says searched by most buyers. That's the hot keyword. Um, anyway, and then popular, and then searched, and then extra. So how popular they are on the left, and then these graphs are how competitive. Anyway, so it, this should help get me some ideas. Let's see if anything works here. Interestingly enough, the word new is used a little bit. I don't have that in there. I'm going to assume this is a new one. Mine is used, but we're going to pretend this is new. Um, stand, pl 
plus. How about Apple? Yeah. I mean, we just put in we just put an iPhone, but Apple would work because it's an Apple iPhone, right? There we go. We're at 26 characters left. Um, fashion is used, and I'm not sure. Maybe somebody's looking for like a fashion case or something, or something that looks fashionable. I don't know. I mean, it's worth a shot. We can drop that in here. And the ones that are a little less, you know, seem a little awkward or we're, we're just kind of trying out, toss them on to the end here. The more important ones need to be right here up at the front. Um, okay, so let's go back. Let's see if there's anything else. Anything else here, guys, you see that maybe we should use? The word card is here. So maybe like card holder or something. Scott used to just said belt belt folder. Oh, the word flip, yeah, because it is kind of like a flip case, isn't it? That's a good point. So let's go back to our title. Let's do, uh, you know, flip case. And, uh, whoops, sorry, I keep flipping back to the wrong one. Oh, sorry, card. I should put in card on here. Maybe card case. See this? We're getting a bunch of ideas. We've only got eight characters left. Um, but anyway, so you can see how this this can help generate some ideas in a hurry. Now, the other thing that we could do is we could go to eBay real fast, and we could just type in, you know, uh, wallet iPhone case. and see what else people are putting. And I do this probably more than anything, honestly. Look at this. This, I mean, this would have made it easy. I'm gonna copy a lot of what they've got. I don't know why they have the the letter or the word at four. That's sort of non-essential, but leather, credit card, holder, wallet, flip case, cover. I don't think we have cover, so I might come back to my title. Um, they have credit card. I think that's a good idea. But see, now now I'm stuck, right? Because there's probably other keywords that I'd like to use. I, but I'm I'm down to one character here. So then I have to ask myself, well, fashion probably was a stretch. So I'm just going to pull that out and maybe make room for any other ideas that I find here in this list. Um, case, cover, luxury. Mine's definitely not luxury. I'm not going to put that there. Luxury. Oh, magnetic. Mine is magnetic. It's got a little magnetic thing on it. Problem with that is, though, magnetic. Wow. Perfect. 80 characters exactly. Okay. Now, are there, you guys have mentioned other keywords here that I haven't used. Like, lots of really good ones. I. I mean, there could be, there could be, you know, 60 relevant keywords that we could put in, and I, I can only put in enough to fit this 80 characters. So that's why I said earlier on in the presentation, like you, you, you put in as much as you can think of and you use these other tools, but you recognize that you might have missed a, a really critical one. And that's why there was a question earlier. Let me, let me just see who, I think it was Don. I think, Don, you asked this. Let me see here. Hold on just a sec, guys. Okay, Don, yeah, I thought this was a really relevant question. You said, if your title is as good as you can get it, and it's been approved by your coach, or it's been looked at and analyzed a bunch, and you still can't sell the item, what do you do then? Well, and, and the point I want to make here is you let it run for a little while like this. Like I, I, this is a good title. This is a great title. I would let this run for, a, you know, two or three weeks. If I still couldn't get this thing sold, I would come back to the title before I even drop the price. I'm not going to be dropping the price on this already. I'll set my price. I'll adjust my title before I, I drop my price. That's everybody's assumption. It's like, oh, okay, well, it's not selling. Well, I'm priced too high. It's not always the case. Sometimes it is the title. So we could we could fix that by maybe changing out some of these keywords and putting in some of your guys' other ideas that we've come up with. 
and, and, and then run it for another few weeks and see if it works. And if it still doesn't, well, then maybe we consider dropping the price a little bit. But I think a lot of times it's in your title that, that you can really fix things, okay? So I know this, this example right here took us way too long, right? I mean, if we, if we sat down with every listing that we did and it took us 20 minutes to create a title, we'd be in trouble. So it's a real, it's a real skill to be able to sit down and quickly look at an item, especially something off of a website, off of a retailer's website. Luckily, maybe we can garner, garner some ideas off of the product description. This was a little tougher because all I gave you guys today was a picture and that's all I've got. I've got no other information on this thing. So I have to just sort of guess at it, what, you know, what keywords are important. And so some of these tools are helpful. Let me, let me give you guys another example. We're gonna do one more here. I'm gonna delete this out. Okay, here's another one. But what is this thing anyway? The only reason why I thought about this is on, on my uh, keychain, I actually have a little Union, a little Union Jack or a little British flag on my keychain. I, lind I lived in London for a couple of years and so I've got this little keychain. So I looked it up, I tried to find it. This isn't exactly what it looks like, but it's kind of similar to that. So it's kind of like my, so it's a British keychain, right? No brand on it, very generic. I thought it'd be a really good example of something that might be tough to title. It's like, how do I get 80 characters out of this thing? Well, let's see if collectively here as a group, we can actually make that happen. So knowing what we've, what we've talked about, and I'm not gonna focus on speed with you guys because I, I wanna do a good thorough example. Let me, sorry, let me close out some of these, these uh, windows. It drives me crazy when I get too many windows up. Okay, so all I'm gonna leave up here is our title section right here, if we're creating a listing, the title builder, and then the picture of this thing. I don't think you guys need to look at it too much. It's a, it's a British keychain. Let's assume this is exactly the item that I'm gonna, that I'm gonna try to sell. Okay, so let's let's start with what we talked about. Just a brain dump is your very first thing. So I'm going to say a British keychain. Um, you know, it's a heart, right? Okay, so that's that's the obvious stuff. What's the not as obvious stuff? Maybe the color. So we've got black in there. We've got silver. Um, you know, just looking at it, it's, it's, uh, I think they call that the Union Jack, don't they? Right? Isn't that how you say it? Yeah, it's the Union Jack, I'm pretty sure. British, how about English, maybe? Now, that's not totally true. If you guys have been over to Britain, you can be you can be Scottish and still British, right? So anyway, that's that's a little nuance that maybe doesn't matter in the title, but maybe I can just put English there anyway, because maybe somebody looks for an English keychain. Anything else you guys can think of? I'm seeing some other suggestions here, some different colors. Is there any way to say so British English? Um, I mean, maybe Great Britain, right? Maybe. Flag. Oh, good thought. I missed that. Somebody just said flag. Flag. UK. Scott. Or no, Kirk, that was you. Good suggestion. Round silver, red, blue. Yeah, I mean, see, we're stuck already. We've got four left here. Sometimes when I've only got three or four left, I'll I'd sometimes just throw in the, the word new. I don't know if how solid this is, right? Because I don't know how good some of these are. If I'm listing an item for the first time, 
I'm probably just doing the whole brain dump thing like this and hoping for the best to, to focus on speed. But if it's an item I really care a lot about and I want to check into, you know, maybe I look up like, you know, Union Jack keychain or something right here under the title builder and see what they come up with. So the word key is there. Oh, so this is an interesting thought. All right, so look at our title. We use keychain as one word. Um, let me ask you guys a question. I'm just going to put this right down here. You've got keychain and then you've got keychain. Are these two? So I'm going to say this is number one and this is number two. Are these the same word to eBay? Pro probably not. Although, I don't know, guys. I actually really don't. I When I get paranoid, sometimes I'll do this. I'll, if it's a really important keyword phrase, I'll put both variations in. But see, even if it doesn't mean the same thing, even if they have totally different meanings, we can't necessarily think about that because I, I got to think like a customer. Like, if I surveyed... 100 people and I said how do you spell keychain how many of that 100 people would put a space in between key and chain and how many of that 100 would put keychain together right it's like it's really hard to say I don't know right so maybe that's that's something you might come up against should I should I put them together I I think they're different words for sure and if I honestly think that there's a good portion of people that would do key space chain I I would do it I would do both variations. Um, other things they have, England quality, interesting. Maybe maybe we could use the word quality in there. Key rings and key ring. Um, that's That's one we haven't thought of. In fact, I would be willing to say that's good enough that I would pull out even like Great Britain. I would I would put you know, key ring. And, and that sounds funny, right? Because it's British, English, key ring, key chain. Isn't that the exact same thing? Well, yeah, it is. But we're trying to cater to as many people as we possibly can, right? So this title builder definitely has some value. Union Jack is used quite a bit. So anyway, I guess what they're saying here, because notice there's not, in our other example, there was uh, there was a hot section, a popular, a searched, and an extra, right? These titles right here. Let's see if I can go back to that. Nope. But anyway, you saw in our last example. This, this only has um, just searched and extra. So these, whatever, for whatever reason, these words aren't as popularly sought after, but the competition level for these are on the right. So anyway, that's just how the, the, the tool works. Now let's go to eBay real fast. I'm going to type in, um, union Jack keychain and just see what other people are doing. Union Jack, England flag, England flag, okay. You can, we got flag in there, though. Cute gift. That looks like they were kind of stretching for, I mean, when you get really generic like that, sometimes you're stretching a little bit when you use something like cute gift. Union Jack, teddy bear, quality, metal. So, now, one of you guys said metal. Rick, I think that was you. That'd be a good keyword, it looks like, and I see people using it. You can see this one right here. Check out this title, Union Jack Guitar Quality. So they were they used the word quality. Quality keychain, key ring. Hey, and sure enough, they, they did what I thought I might consider doing. They put in key space chain, they put in key ring, and then they put in keychain, all, all one word, right? So it's like some of those little skills that you have to create a good title like that is going to make all the difference in the world to closing some of these sales. This title falls short for sure. If I highlight this title, 
I mean, it's not bad. The structure of it's not bad, but if I highlight it and go to wordcounter.net, they're at 47. They're, they're, they're completely shooting themselves in the foot right now because they're giving themselves half of the opportunity that everybody else has. Why would you only use 47 keywords or characters in your title when you're given 80? That you're just handicapping yourself against your competition. So hopefully you guys, hopefully you guys are seeing that a little bit. But again, I, the, the big takeaway from you, for you guys today is I don't want you to use Title Builder and then come back to me and say, Trevor, it's taking me you know, 40 minutes every time I do a listing because I'm spending 30, 35 minutes on my title. No way do you want to do that. I mean, you want to be able to do this fast, and that's why it is a real skill. I share this with you because I hope maybe this helps you, um, you know, come up with some keywords. I share the strategy of going in and looking on eBay to ho in hopes that that helps you come up with some. Trust yourself. Do a do a brain dump, kind of like we did there at the start. And and we're going to create really good titles that way. And what's really cool about it is you get better and better. And you've listed in lots of different industries, which is why sometimes we encourage you when you very first start at this to be listing, you know, do some do some office furniture and do some sporting goods and try some jewelry and try some apparel and whatever. We have you do a bunch of everything. That way you can kind of get a skill set of doing keyword research for all sorts of different industries so you can get better and better at this. It is a skill and hopefully some of these tools help out with what you guys are doing. Um, Nicole, let me let me address your question. You say, why do people sometimes capitalize certain words in their title, and does that and does that make a difference? Well, I don't know. I, my guess is all caps versus the structure I told you to use just a capital letter in every in the beginning of every word versus people like doing lowercase and then some capital. I don't think that actually impacts your visibility. I think you'll get found. But the title just looks a lot more professional if you do it the way eBay suggests. Um, and they suggest not doing all caps and not doing all lowercase, but just capitalizing the first letter of each word. It just looks nicer. And that's part of their best practices. I don't think it affects search, but since they recommend you do it, that's definitely why we do it. Yeah, like Don, you say you see brand new in capital letters all the time. And that's... I don't know. That's an interesting thing to have in the title, brand new. I just think to myself, how many people go to eBay and they go, I need a brand new iPhone case. I think it's unlikely. I think brand new ought to be kind of an afterthought. I know I, you, it's in like all caps. And I think in essence, people do a lot of that type of stuff so that when you get into search results like this, they like to try to catch somebody's eye. Um, I don't know how effective that is, and eBay doesn't recommend it, so I I don't recommend it either. But I think I think, and even the word new, like I don't put the word new on there unless I've got two or three characters left, and I've just got to burn a little bit of space. I'll put the word new on there. Um, so anyway, I mean that's just that's just food for thought. If you if you stick with the general principles that we've talked about today and you and, and you get fast at this and it's chock full of good keywords, you're gonna give yourself a serious edge. Because I promise you, people don't do the same type of research and learn the same type of skill sets. They they hastily throw together their title. A lot of people do, and you're just gonna be a cut above if you do it the right way. Okay, guys, I, I'm gonna finish up with that. We've talked about titles so much. If you guys have gone through a lot of our past presentations, you're probably just tired of hearing about it, and it feels like we're beating a dead horse, but that's just because it's so important, so I hope you guys see that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn off the recording. For those of you guys who are watching this recorded, thanks for, thanks for coming. We're glad to have you um, seeing our recordings.